Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala, president of Audioholics, and today we're here with... I'm Tony Liotta, contributing writer, and I brought some products from Sonos for you to uh, take a look at. Awesome, guys. We're going to be looking at three products from Sonos, if I'm correct. We are. We're looking at the Play 5, the Play Bar, and the Sub. The Play Sub. Okay, so why don't we go over and give a little overview of each product. Let's start with the Play 5 uh, wireless speaker. All right, so the Play 5 is a six-speaker phased array speaker that is designed to move from one room to another in the Sonos system. Okay, and does this pair Bluetooth or wireless, or what is it? how does it work exactly? So the Play 5 is a wireless setup. You can also set it up through Ethernet, but no Bluetooth, no Apple Play, only wireless. So it's only wireless, okay. So what happens now when you try to plug it into your phone and, and if you're not in the app and you try to lower the volume on the phone, does that work or do you have to actually go into the app and to control the Play, the play 5 all the time? So like with other Sonos products, you have to use the Sonos app and the volume only works within the Sonos app. So if you're using your phone and you're playing uh, Candy Crush, uh, you can't control the volume of the Sonos product. Okay, remember that, guys. When you're playing games on your phone, if this thing's blasting out, you can't control the volume of it. you got to go back into the app, which I guess is a bit of a disadvantage because we've reviewed systems like the Oppo Sonica. Right, for about half the price. Yeah, about half the price. And that basically worked Bluetooth or wireless or through their app. That's right. So it gave you more flexibility in actually controlling the device, not just through the app. Yeah. Now, it did sound good. I mean, this is a Play 5. And so you can see it is a hefty speaker, uh -huh. and it weighs... It weighs about 12 pounds. It weighs about 12 pounds. Um, and it does, I mean, it's a good-looking product. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some some other issues with it, like, for instance, uh, just give a tug on that cord. Oh, there. my gosh, it, it just, comes right out. Yeah, it just falls right out. So that is one issue. I mean, hopefully at 12 pounds, you know, you're not curling it or anything, but yeah. it should be in place. It does have a 3.5 millimeter jack in it though, so you can add uh, sound that way. Your analog connections, guys. Okay, and so did you crank it up? I mean, did it sound clean when you cranked it up? Yeah, it sounded good. It sounded comparable to the Oppo, to the Oppo Sonica. Right. Um, and as far as in a, in a bedroom or an office, it would sound really nice in those in those areas. Okay, so obviously, guys, it has limitations. You're not going to be putting this in a 6,000 cubic foot room and shaking the house. Right. Okay. Yep. Now, if you want more base extension, what would you do? You would get the play sub and add that? Into yeah, the I don't think that's really... So, I mean, you're going to put this in, and then in a little room, you're going to put this in, and then you're right. going to add the sub to it. Is it really worth it? it? Probably I don't, not. I don't think it does, because now you're adding another $700 to the price. At right. that point, you could just get a pair of towers and a receiver and, and, and be done with it. Right. You're talking about the $500 plus the $700 for the sub. Yeah, that's a little cost prohibitive for most people. I think the sub is better paired with the um, the play bar. So why don't we talk a little bit about the play bar? Yeah, let's take a look at this. Play bar is, is pretty interesting. Now, you can have it in a couple of different... Uh, options you can play it like this or you can play it upright now okay. we looked at this in in both ways and what was your opinion on it well i think it's better to have it wall mounted because the drivers are facing forward towards the listening area and it's basically it's a nine speaker phased array so you've got an mtm in the center channel which is a woofer tweeter woofer then you got two woofers on each side, and then you got angled tweeters, one on each end of the cabinet. So it actually gives you a very wide sound field. It's not like a trick DSP, like an Atmos soundbar per se. So it doesn't try to give you the illusion of surround sound, but it does enhance, it widens the sound stage of your TV. It's much better than the sound quality you get out of your TV speakers, right? Right, and some of the things like I found was it does have true side firing speakers as opposed to angled speakers. Right. And so you do get that better sound stage with it. And you can pair it up with a sub. Well, in this case, it makes sense because now you're going to want more bass when you're watching movies. You have this wireless sub. It goes right onto the network. And this is a cool product. I mean, it's a little pricey, to be honest with you, for what you get. For $700, you can get a real meaty sub from the likes of HSU. Yeah. Or you can get the RSL Speedwoofer 10S for $499, which will just crush the sub yeah. in terms of output and extension. Sonos claims this plays down to 25 hertz. They don't give you a max SPL rating. But it is an interesting design. It's got, I think they're six-inch drivers, but they're oval drivers. They're not round. The drivers fire at each other to cancel out mechanical vibration within the cabinet so they control the resonances pretty well that way the sub is not very easily localized because of the way they designed it 
it's pretty inert. It's not a hollow box. And it's pretty heavy. Yeah, so the cabinet is pretty inert. Um, it's not going to shake the house or anything like that. But it's built well. I think this thing weighs what about 35, 35 30, 36 pounds, yeah, 36 so pounds. It's, so it's got some technology in it. It's got some pretty high excursion drivers. It's got an inverted butyl rubber surround, which is pretty cool. So it allows more travel in a smaller space for the driver. It also has two class D amplifiers in it. They don't give you the actual output of it, but it's also ported. So there's ports on each side of the bottom. So, I mean, it's, it's got some pretty cool technology in it but again this is not a sub that's going to shake your house it's more of a complement for the category of product that it's competing against and in this case it's competing against a bose right so uh one of the things though is we set everything up here in the room before we started shooting the video right and it took about 30 minutes to get things set up which i think is a long time to yeah. set up a, a wi-fi system but the sub did set up very easily yeah, it's a bit kludgy, guys. Once you get this set up on a Wi-Fi network and you go and bring it to another place to do another Wi-Fi network, there's some. we found a little bit of issue. Of it wants to going. go back to the original Wi-Fi network that you set it up on. And so if you kind of look around the room, you see how much stuff that Audioholics goes through in a week. Yeah. Uh, we're always moving stuff around. And yeah. it, it just it makes it kind of difficult. But... It is a wireless speaker, so all you have to do is plug it in, and you don't have to run a sub wire back to an amp or anything like that. And it, it has an app, and it gives you prompts about setting up the sub. It's you know about the location. It, it has a microphone built in uh, for your phone that you can use to do some measurements, and it'll tell you you know what does it sound better this way or this way. So it actually helps you with an auto setup to get you going, and it asks you what you're pairing it with, whether it's a, one of the speakers, a Play Five, or the sound bar itself. So there's some useful features in the app. You definitely, you have to use the app either way. So take the time to set up the product properly to get the best performance that you can out of it. This Sonos, the Sonos system here is, is in a category of product that's hotly contested by other brands. You've got Pioneer, you've got um, Onkyo, you've got Bose, I think is the direct competitor here because Bose has a similarly priced soundbar to this. They also get, have a similarly priced sub. Their sub is a 10 inch down firing driver. It looks like it's a little more hefty than this guy right here. They also have a wireless speaker system so you could do 5.1. So guys, you can do the Sonos as a 5.1 system, but you've got to add a pair of Play 1s, which are 199 each. Which are 199 each compared to the Bose setup. Yes. Which were... I think it was two ninety nine for the pair. For the pair. So yeah. the Bose comes out a little bit cheaper, but you're also dealing with the Bose. You're getting a single driver with a wireless speaker. With the Play One, you're actually getting a two way speaker with two built in amplifiers. So obviously, the Sonos surround speaker is going to be of higher quality than the Bose. But the Bose soundbar is actually pretty good. I can't believe I hear myself saying yeah. about the Bose product. <laughs> The Bose soundbar is very comparable to this, and their subwoofer is actually a real subwoofer this time. So you've got some tight competition here, guys. Right, and every uh, company's coming out with home, 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 whole home audio whole solutions. Home audio solutions. He's a little tongue tied today. <laughs> so it, you know, it's a good setup. Is it a cost-effective setup? Not necessarily, because when you start getting and you start pricing out the soundbar plus the sub and the surrounds, you can get a 5.1 discrete system you know, small satellite speakers and a sub and a receiver. And, you know, it's a little bit more complicated to set up and some people don't have the a flexibility options of putting a discrete system. Obviously that is the better choice, but considering what this is and how it looks and how it plays all your Wi-Fi stuff, it's, you know, it's a very competitive product for what it is. It is, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the wireless options on this on the sono system because every product here has the same network right Right. so so kind of the idea is you use your phone and you pull up the sonos app and then you use some of the different streaming options inside the app so unfortunately if you have spotify on your phone you have to use it through the sonos app right. but it does have 30 different streaming options within the sonos app Okay, I challenge you to say all 30 of them. Yeah, <laughs> there's Spotify, TuneIn, LinkedIn. No, wait a minute, that's LinkedIn. No, that <laughs> the right. wrong one. Well, I'm sure it's listed on their website if yeah. you want to look at the specs. So why don't we talk about a little bit more of the technology behind the Play Bar um, DSP that they have. They have a night mode and then they have a, like a... They have a speech enhancement, speech mode, enhancement mode and a night mode, which is good for me because my wife's always complaining that I'm playing everything too loud. So the night mode, the speech enhance enhancement mode... Uh, works really well. Uh, if you want to play music 
through the sound bar though, just straight from your phone. Again, you have to use the app. Right. If it's hooked up to an Apple TV or a Roku, because it's hooked up to your TV, you can then use it uh, to play music as well. Oh, okay. And guys, just so you know, the night mode is, is basically just a dynamic compressor, so it makes the lower sound passages louder. That way it's not going, you know, you're watching a movie and, and you can barely hear the volume or the dialogue, you gotta crank it up, then all of a sudden it shatters, glass shatters, and everybody in the house is woken up. That prevents that, so that's an option there that you have at night. And then the enhancement for the intelligibility focuses more of the dialogue through the center channel, which is that MTM, they dedicated MTM. They're really emphasizing the sound quality for the center. So people that are either hard of hearing or they just wanna hear the vocals better, you use that mode as well. And you found that that really helped. Right, right? it did. It was a good sounding soundbar. It fit in its price class. I mean, it wasn't a $200 soundbar. It, it, I'd say it was comparable to some of the $1,000 soundbars I listened to. Well, that's good news because we have him geared up to basically review every soundbar we can. So that's his expertise right now. That's right. So we'll have more soundbars for, for you in the future and I uh, hope you keep listening to him. Excellent. So guys, let us know what you're using. If you're using a soundbar, tell us which one you're using. Do you have any experience with the Sonos one? Do you have any setup issues? You know, give us some feedback on what you're doing at your home theater and let us know what you'd like to see us review next in terms of this category of sound bars and sound products. All right, guys, until next time, keep listening. Somebody complained about our cameraman once. Your cameraman sucks. <laughs> it's like you don't have a cameraman. That's the cameraman. Stan. The tripod. His name Mr. Is... Tri Mr. Tripod. Yeah.